We are so excited that um, Professor uh, Tony Campola, Shane Claiborne, we're excited that you've been able to lecture in our series on grace. And I just, I wanted to know, what are some of the challenges you've seen to young people experiencing grace? Mm. Do you want to go on that? Well, I, I, I would start by saying I think one of the biggest obstacles to understanding grace has been Christians <laughs> who have been so disgraceful in many ways that, that have um, not always resembled Christ very well in the world. So I think one of the things we've got to begin with is a, a confession to say sorry that we've been so unlike our Christ and we've become often known for the very things that Jesus reprimanded religious folks for. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know, when you were saying what you just said, it occurred to me that uh, a place where I see the church ruining its testimony of can't talk about grace at all without getting a degree of cynicism from young people who say the church has shown almost no grace to gay and lesbian people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been judgmental. It's cast these people out of the church. It's, mm -hmm. it's called them abominations in the eyes of God, called them all kinds of terrible names. And, you know, here's this church talking about grace, grace, grace. And grace, by any definition, mm -hmm. is unmerited favor. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. And then they look at the gay community and say, you don't deserve grace. Mm -hmm. uh, they look at the gay community and say, I'm sorry, we can't accept you. Uh, I know in my own life, I am a very solid evangelical in the sense that I have a high view of scripture. Mm -hmm. I believe that salvation comes from having a personal transformative relationship with the resurrected Christ. I have no problems with any of the doctrines of the Apostles' Creed, but I have identified with these brothers and sisters, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and the evangelical community, well, has been pretty negative towards me, mm -hmm. and I'm not gay. The very fact that I'm saying, I think we need to love these brothers and sisters. I think we need to accept them into the life of the church. I think we have to make room for them. And they say, well, uh, you know, we gotta go, the scripture says this in the first chapter of Romans. Say, the fact is that almost all of our churches here in the United States have people who are divorced and remarried mm -hmm. in the fellowship. And I always ask, if we're willing to accept people who are divorced in remarriage, which I think we should do, right. then when Jesus speaks very specifically about this, and Paul speaks very specifically about this, then why are we so devoid of grace when it comes to our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters? Hmm. We show grace towards divorced people, and I think we should and we must. Why aren't we showing any grace here? And I'm finding increasingly with young people that this becomes the turnoff because when we talk about grace, they don't believe us anymore mm -hmm. because they've seen a total absence of it from most church people in the world today. Mm -hmm.